All right, let's look at how you calculate the pH of a weak acid. A pH of a weak acid is very different from the pH of a strong acid. Shares some elements in common, but others will be different. So, how do we do this? First of all, we need to think about how we're going to get a pH. We have to remember that pH is equal to the negative log of hydrogen ion concentration. Given that reality, here's the roadmap for how you deal with this. This is not a strong acid. This is a weak acid. So you need to use an equilibrium constant to get the hydrogen ion concentration. And then from hydrogen ion concentration, you get the pH. And that's going to be our kind of big picture way of going about it. Now, um, in order for that to happen, we need to figure out what the hydrogen ion concentration from this will be. And from that, in order to do that, you need this also, this, this table of dissociation con constants. Um, optionally, but highly recommended, is to begin by making an ice table. Remember, initial concentration, changing concentration, equilibrium, a.k.a. final concentration. And I'll do this. Why is this highly recommended? It allows you to organize your thoughts and basically not make a mistake. Because mistakes, small mistakes, turn snowball into big mistakes and cause the problem to be answered wrong. So... Uh, backing up a sec, let's remind ourselves that any acid, HA, will dissociate into hydrogen ion plus the anion. We're going to assume this is a monoprotic acid. Everything I've presented here is assumed to be monoprotic. So, let's see. You will need to keep track of, for, your, for this, the concentration of the acid, the concentration of the hydrogen ion, and concentration of the anion. Why? Because the way we're going to get this is through um, an equilibrium constant, which is the products over the reactants, which is to say the hydrogen ion concentration times the anion concentration divided by the original acid, well, the acid concentration at equilibrium. So this is equilibrium concentrations for all of them. This is the concentrations from here go here. And we need to solve for this. So here's our approach. Here's how we know what numbers to put into here. Since we need to put these numbers into here, we need to start by figuring out what goes here by filling these out first. And what this is saying is that at equilibrium, phenol, or sorry, at equilibrium, this is going to partially dissociate and give you your pH. So at equilibrium, the, P, the concentration of the phenol is not this. This is what you start with, 0 0.56 molar. So if the concentration is 0 0.56, I guess it's already implied molar since this is up here. But um, at the beginning, there is none of these. At the beginning, you start with just this acid, and then some of it dissociates. And for every bit that dissociates, a hydrogen ion is formed, and an uh, anion is released. Thus, your equilibrium concentration becomes 0 0.56 minus x. And then that same x is, your, I pro, actually, I don't need this plus right here. That was unnecessary. Oops. Um, x is the equilibrium concentration for each of these things. So that's what goes here. Let's put this right here, put this right here, and put this right here. And then the k itself comes from this table and does not need to be memorized. So we're dealing with phenol. There it is, 1.3 times 10 to the negative 10th. So 1.3 times 10 to the negative 10th, that's this value from right here, equals, this is x. I'll just, I didn't need to put in the parentheses, just doing it so it's easy to see the parallel between this and this. This is your anion concentration. And then this is this. And I'll, parentheses aren't ne strictly necessary. I'm just doing this so it's easy to see the parallels between this and this right here. 0 0.56 minus x. All right, so that's where we begin. Now we need to kind of simplify things in order to solve for x, and we're going to start with our little white lie. We're going to say that this number is tiny compared to 0 0.56. There you go, this number is tiny compared to 0 0.56, so we 
will ignore it, which means here's my little white lie. We're going to pretend this x just isn't there because it's so small compared to this one. We're going to say 1.3 times 10 to the negative 10th, see the same number right here, is equal to, just like here, fraction form just like before. Copy this top part over, x and x again. In the bottom, we're just going to say 0 0.56. This is the little white lie that makes calculation easier. It's not that algebraically difficult to do this. You need a couple extra steps, but it does save time and makes things easier. So given that reality, here we go. And we'll combine these two x's to have it be equal to x squared over 0 0.56. So 1.3 times 10 to the negative 10th equals x squared over 0 0.56. So we times both sides by 0 0.56, let these cancel, and 0 0.56 on the other side as well. So we times both sides by 0 0.56 in order to cancel this. We now have x squared equals 0 0.56 times 1.3 times 10 to the negative 10th. We take the square root of that to find what x equals. So square root of x squared equals square root of this. So x equals the square root of 0 0.56 times 1.3 times 10 to the negative 10th. And when you do that calculation, x is equal to a number, let's see, a big long number. Here's part of it. 8.53229 times 10 to the negative 6th. And we got to remember, what is x? x is your hydrogen ion concentration because it's unknown. However much dissociates, that's the amount of, X, amount of hydrogen ion that there is. So that's our units, molarity, and that's our chemical identity, hydrogen ion concentration. But that's not the final answer. Remember, the question was asking us to calculate the pH, not the hydrogen ion concentration. So remember that pH equals the negative log of hydrogen ion concentration. We need to take the negative log of 8.53229 times 10 to the negative 6. This is way wrong sig figs given that this is only two sig figs here and that this is only two sig figs here, but that's okay. We're not done yet. So I just this is just because it's not the final answer. So this is how you get the pH value. And when you plug this into your calculator, the answer is 5.068934 blah, blah, blah. And when we round for sig figs to two sig figs, on account of that number from the chart only having two sig figs, um, it's 5.1. That's the answer for how we deal with the pH of a weak acid.